Let's solve the advent of code 2021 day 21 puzzle using Ivy. In this puzzle, we have two players throwing dice and moving around a 10 position circular board numbered one through 10. At each turn, the player rolls a die three times, moves forward the sum of the rolls, and then adds the current position number to their running total. The first player to a thousand wins. Now in this puzzle, the die is producing a sequence of increasing numbers. It produces one, two, three on the first three rolls, meaning move six, then four, five, six, meaning move 15, and so on. And we need to compute the losing player's score times the number of die rolls when the game ends. So let's write n play x, where n die rolls have happened, and x is a vector of the position, the game state, which is player one's position, player one's score, player two's position, and player two's score. So to start with, we need to do the rolls, and the rolls will be the sum of n plus one, two, and three. And then we need to update player one's position, which is going to be x of one plus r, except we need to do mod 10, and we need to get it right because it's one based, so it's like that. And then the score is the player's original score plus the position p. And then if the score is bigger than 1,000, we're done, and we save player two score times n plus three. And otherwise, we recursive loop to having done three more rolls, switching player two into player one slot, and then player one's updated positions and score. So in the sample, player one starts at play position four. So we'll say play start 4080. And that is the right number. So let's try the actual input, which is 3040, 995904. All right, we got one star, on to part two. All right, this is a little bit more work. Uh, now it's saying, basically, run all possible games and count the number of times that player one wins and player two wins and figure out, uh, for the player that wins the most, how many games they win in. And the number of games is enormous, but it has been cut somewhat. The die can only produce a one or two or a three, and the game ends when the player, some player reaches the score 21. And even with those constraints, player one wins in this ridiculous number of universes or possible games, and player two wins in this still ridiculous number of possible games. So we clearly can't count all of these, so we're going to have to uh, compute the counts instead. And we can do this a bit like we did for the string rewriting, where we compute the effect of a single step from a given state as an update matrix, and then multiply a vector of counts by that update matrix repeatedly. Now one useful observation is that player one and player two don't actually interact in this game. They just play independently until one wins. The only interaction is if one player wins, the other player has to stop. And so we can focus on simulating a single player and then combine them later. So to start with, uh, here are the 27 possible outcomes of three roles. Let's see, it's gonna be the possible outcomes of one role, outer product, another role, outer product, another roll, and because Ivy is right associative, you have to assign D at the end there. So those are the, the possible roles of three, three roles of one, two, and three. And we can sort them just to see them better. And we can count them. Say, how many times does each number from one to 10 appear? So three appears once, four appears three times, six appears five times, and so on. So let's save that counting idiom, say to count one through n in x, it's sum of iota n outer product with x. 10 count rolls, same numbers, that's good. So now let's figure out how to simulate the actual game. We wanna figure out how to evolve one game state into the possible next states and how many of each state happens as, as next time. And so let's just start by assuming we're at position four and score 12. The next position is going to be p plus all the possible rolls. And so that's p plus rolls, but again, we need to, to update it mod 10 with a one base. Oh, let's call that roll instead of rolls. There we go. And so roll four, this is where you can get to, plus four. Um, it does wrap around correctly, so that's good. So let's save that position list. And then the score for each of these positions is the score we started with plus the position number. Uh, except that if we get to 21, the game is over. So let's just call everything above 21, 21 to keep the states simpler. So 
Now we don't have any 22s. Let's save that score list. And now we're going to need to count the number of ways to get to other states given an earlier state, just like we counted the number of ways to roll a given total. So, but we need the states to be single numbers. And right now the state is a position and score pair. So we can do our usual trick and combine those into a single integer. We'll say that a position score pair is going to be the score plus 22 because there's 22 possible scores times p minus 1 because p is 1 based. And then if we want to extract the position from that, that's 1 plus x div 22. And if we want to extract the score, that's x mod 22. And so we should be able to say pp score ss. Those are all the encoded position and score pairs. And if we ask for, let's save that, if we ask for the positions and the scores, those are the numbers we had before. So that's great. All right. Now, there are 220 encoded single player states with scores 0 to 21 and positions 1 to 10. And so we can count them just like we counted the other scores. We can say the counts of x equals 220 count of 1 plus x because we're starting at 0 based. But let's put them in a nice matrix instead. And we'll say count x. So this shows what can happen starting with, where were we at? Position 4, score 12, adding one roll or three rolls, but one turn. And so after three rolls, you can get from position four to position seven, and that can uh, put you into, there's one way to do that, it's one, 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 and that will put you into 21, 20, 19 for a score, which is 12 plus seven, so that's good. There's three ways to end at eight with 20. There's six ways to end at nine with 21. And then there's seven ways to end at 10. You would have 22, but we stopped at 21, so it's still in the 21 column. So that's great, let's save that. We'll say next of x equals count of roll pause x score 21 min score x plus roll pause x. But let's do the IV thing where you have a variable. There we go. So we should say next of four score 12. That's the same grid that we just saw, that's good. All right, well that's almost correct because what if you start with 21? we're still stuck at 21. And really, if you start at 21, you shouldn't go anywhere. The, the game is over. And so we need to change next to uh, account for that. So we'll say if the score of x is 21, then just give me back a matrix of zeros and otherwise do this. All right. So next of four score 21 is all zeros. Oops, next of four score 12 is good. All right, great, so now, we can apply, we can figure out the next for a given single state. So now we can make a transition matrix showing what happens for every possible start state. Uh, but each row of the matrix will be these 220 numbers in a single row. So the first thing we need to do is flatten these. So say V next is the vector form of next. And then the matrix is just V next applied to all the possible states. All right, it should be 220 by 220 and it is. And so now we can check the rows that we've already seen. Let's just pull them back out. That would be four score 12 and four score 21. And those are the same matrix as we wanted to see, so that's great. And so now we just need a start vector. The start is count of four score zero. And there's our start with our one entry at position four and score zero. And then a single step is just a matrix multiply. We do the linear form matrix multiply M and then step start. All right, that's good. There should be 27 positions there, and there are. Step, step, start. There should be 729 here, and there are. Eventually, the games will start ending, and it won't be 27 to the end, but it's working. So great, let's simulate n steps. If n is zero, we leave x alone, and otherwise, we do n minus one steps, starting from step forward from x. So zero steps, two steps. This all looks great. So after five steps, we should be pretty close to winning since the game stops at 21. So let's see, five steps start, it's a little narrow. There we go. There's a whole bunch of games that have reached score 21. And uh, we can count the number of ways to reach a particular score by summing the columns. And there's actually 3.2 million games that end with 21 after five steps. And so let's make a table of all the outcomes of zero through uh, n steps. We'll say n outcomes of x, outcomes of x. If n is less than zero, then we'll just make an empty uh, list of 10 by 22 matrices. 
And otherwise, we'll take x, we'll save x, and then we'll add the result of n minus 1 outcomes counting from step forward from x. And so then we should be able to say, let's get 21 st outcomes starting at uh, count p score 0. So this is all the outcomes starting at position p. So if we say outcomes of 4, that's a lot, and then there's a whole bunch of zeros. So probably 21 is way too many steps. The game ends well before that. Let's see. Um, these are the sums of all the games in all the different matrices. And it looks like, you know, this is what, 10? So, you know, we might, it might be that if you start at the right position, that next step might happen, but we can certainly cut off 10 of those. So let's see what outcomes, what do we say? Let's say 11 here, we'll cut 10 of those off. Great. All right, so now we can be able to look at, look at all the outcomes starting at position four. And if we look at um, outcome of one is what happens if you don't take any steps. So outcome of one plus two should be two steps. That's the one we've seen before, that's good. Let's just check, count four score zero. Oops, that's not what I meant. One plus two equals equals. There we go, okay, so that does match, that's great. So now let's just look at the counts for reaching score 21. So if we look at just the, 20, the 22 column, which is score 21, after one turn, there's no way to get there at any position. After two turns, there's no way to get there. Sorry, this is zero turns, one turns, two turns. After three turns, you can get there um, at various positions. Um, so for example, there's seven ways to end at position two with a score of at least 21 after three turns and so on. And so that all looks good. And so now let's add those up. Let's see. That's the number of ways to win after a certain number of steps. After zero steps, one step, two step. After three steps, there's 4,600 ways to win. Four steps, even more, and so on. And notice they come back down because you, to get that far, you have to not have won in all the previous steps. So let's save that. We can say the wins of P is the sum of the sum of 0, 0, 21 drop outcomes of p. So wins of 4 should be that same one, and it is. So now we know how many roll sequences lead to wins for player 1 after exactly a certain number of turns starting at position 4. Now in the course of a real game, we still do need to account for player 2. So if player 1 is going to win, the only thing player 2 has to do is not win, not have won yet. And so let's call the non-wins continues, because the game continues. And we'll say the continues starting at position p that's just the sum of the other parts of the matrix. So 0, 0, minus 1 drop outcomes of P. So player 2 in the sample starts at position 8. So those are the continues of 8. And now the number of winning games for player 1 after, say, you know, 5 moves is going to be the number of winning move sequences for player 1 at 5 times the number of continues for player 2 after 4 moves because player two only gets four before player one gets five. And that's about four billion uh, distinct games where player one wins after exactly five moves. And more generally, we can compute all the games where player one wins after n moves by multiplying the continues and the wins shifted, and then we can add those up. And there's 444 billion, which is the right number. Okay, that's good. And so player two is supposed to have, uh, so for player two to win, we have to be able to have uh, a win for, for player two's position times a continue for player one's position. And player two here is going to win after player one has had the same number of moves. So we don't have to do the shifting trick. And that is also the right answer. So that's good. And so now we just have to take the, the max of those two. So we can write this up. We can say the wins for player one is one drop wins of position one times minus one drop continues of position two. And the wins of two is continues for player one times wins for player two. And then w1 max w2. So we should be able to say four puzzle eight is the sample. That's the right number. What was the uh, input? Three and four. Three puzzle four. All right. That is a biggish number. Let's see. And we got our stars. Have a nice day.